Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about five of the top reasons why Windows users have trouble getting acclimated to Linux, at least for the first couple times that they go and boot it up. Now, not all versions of Linux are made equal. Some installations may be a little bit more complicated, but these are about Linux in general, because for the most part, once you know how to use one variant of Linux, you know how to use them all. Um, so first up, let's click and drag. You can see here on the desktop for this Manjaro installation, uh, installation one of my favorite versions of Linux, by the way, uh, that we can drag and drop stuff. If I go boot up uh, the Thunar file manager, uh, we still have that interface that we're so used to inside of Windows. But oftentimes, it's going to be needed that you need to just dive into the terminal in order to get done what you're looking for. For instance, um, sometimes you're trying to move stuff around in Linux, but you don't have permission even though you're the administrative user. In order to do anything that may be dangerous on your computer, uh, such as delete files outside of your home directory, uh, you might need to use the sudo command. And that means you have to jump into the terminal. You can't just right click and do run as a uh, administrator. So that would be uh, sudo, well, let's see, what kind of command would we do here? Let's just say you were doing the copy command, so that's sudo copy, and we would do downloads into, okay, let's make one in the root directory. So copy, and we need the dash r, so you can already see this kind of gets a little bit tricky. So we're going to recursively copy a directory from the downloads, uh, or the uh, root, the home directory, into root slash downloads. So we can only do that if we actually use the sudo command. And that won't work in the file manager unless you have Thunar, the file manager, open using sudo to basically make it run as administrator. And we can see in the root directory, um, theoretically, yeah, we see the, the downloads right about there. So that works. But would you know that as a Windows user going straight into Linux? Probably not. That probably looks a little bit confusing if you're not used to command prompt or terminal commands uh, or that other kind of IT junk. So uh, let's go ahead and remove that. So that would be rm-r downloads. And that's also going to need to be sudo, by the way, um, because we're working in the root directory and that uh, directory was created using sudo. So it's owned by the root account. And <laughs> I'm trying not to be uh, too cryptic here, but basically what I'm implying here is that the terminal is a big part of Linux. You can't really get much done without using it. So you've got to get used to it. You're going to have to type some commands in if you really want to use Linux effectively. So secondly, and this is going to be pretty confusing for a lot of people, uh, executable files, .exes, they don't really exist in Linux. Uh, it is possible to run Windows executable programs inside of Wine, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other story, and it's also, you know, pretty uh, pretty involved, a bit complicated. Um, but normally in Windows, you have all of these different file formats, like .jpg for images, .exe for programs you run. But in Linux, you don't really have executable files that you boot up as a program. Uh, rather, and maybe I can find an example here. So uh, rather, what you would have is all of these little uh, programs that if you do a ls command, uh, like I just did, um, that lists a directory, you can see that it's green. What that means is that it is uh, a file that can be run. Now, it's not an executable you click on, but if you wanted to go ahead and run it, it would be something like sudo uh, period for the current directory slash rc.local, and then if that file is able to be run, able to be executed, um, then it would go ahead and do it just fine. But it takes some getting used to that kind of thing because in Windows, you just double click the program and it works, right? Now, I would say that when you do install programs, most of them will put a start menu icon in, but this doesn't apply to everything. So here at graphics, we have GIMP. 
and that, that'll work basically like Windows. So you just click it and it opens. That's what most users want to see. But there will be those cases where you have these programs that simply aren't going to boot up like that because they don't have a magical shortcut created in the start menu. So be ready for that. But many programs, most of your standard stuff will have that, so it's not all bad. And uh, once again, I'm, I'm not trying to imply that Linux is unlearnable or anything like that, or even bad. It's it's nice. I really like Manjaro and uh, Ubuntu and all these other variants of Linux. I'm just pointing out, it, it does have a learning curve, especially if you're not used to this stuff. So something um, that's kind of unfortunate, and I think this is one of the parts where Linux is a bit weak at the moment, is that stuff tends to crash all the time, and it often has cryptic debug messages. So, um, you'll just have a program running, and it might say some kind of developer note, like, error, um, not enough memory, or something like that, and you might get that kind of thing in Windows in a nice pop-up message. Um, in Linux, you might see that in the terminal, and it might be accompanied by 20 other lines of debug messages. Um, and uh, unless you're going to just go ahead and Google through it to really figure out what it means. It can be kind of cryptic and a little bit of a pain to deal with. It's not so much that the messages are worse than the ones in, Linux, in Windows, but that you'll run into them a lot more often. And often you can't just fix a program by closing it down and reopening it. It might just be something like the program can't run without this library. I think that's a better example. And you need to know magically which library are you supposed to install through a terminal command. Um, now, if you already know the library, yeah, it's a piece of cake, but, I mean, knowing the command, uh, knowing the target is half the battle. So, yeah, good luck with that. Um, also, there's a completely different directory structure in Linux. We can show this in the file manager. I don't want to make you guys have to look at the terminal too much here. But uh, this is what Linux looks like. You don't see any uh, C drive. You don't see program files. You don't see uh, the like, should, what, what's it called? The Windows, the Windows directory with System32 and all that other stuff. Um, is that you have like bin, boot, dev, etc, home, uh, which is kind of the C drive slash users, by the way, and all this other stuff. So it's not necessarily that it's more complicated, but uh, some of this stuff. I mean, it's not. It is not obvious. Like a three letter. Thing, what the heck is OPT? What's SRV? What's ETC? I mean, I think I still don't know what all of this stuff actually stands for. Um, but it's like, well, where did Linux put your program? Is it in ETC? Is it in opt? Is it in user? It takes a lot of trial and error and kind of just knowing and finding and where is commands to figure all that out. So not so much that it's harder, but you will have to learn it. And um, I mean, there are college courses where basically half the course is about learning the directory structure. I had to take one of those. It was uh, not exactly the best use of time, but hey. So manual app installations is kind of the fifth one. Um, it's not like it's completely manual, but it, it's more like uh, you have a script to run to kind of in install everything on your computer. So rather than just simply extracting files to the right folder, which is like the manual version on Windows, or running an installation package, uh, you might actually need to do some fairly manual stuff. And I guess in most cases, it's not too bad. One, one example would be NVIDIA graphics drivers. So you want to install the latest NVIDIA graphics driver. You don't have the magical NVIDIA graphics driver manager that Windows has. Um, and I would say that in, uh, in, in uh, distributions, like for instance, Manjaro, uh, they do have a manager of sorts, and uh, if you do uh, upgrade command on your computer, it will grab the package which it thinks it should upgrade to, but if you need a specific one or a beta one, um, or just one that isn't in the package manager, you might need to kind of go into the terminal and run a few commands in order to get it to play nicely and install on your computer correctly. Um, Another good example would be the Yower package manager. So this connects to the Arch user repository, and um, you can install packages on your Manjaro or Arch Linux machine that aren't included in Pacman, the main package manager. 
but uh, you might need to say, do you want to edit uh, the install script before running? Are you sure you're okay with installing all of these extras, or which extras do you want to include in that? Uh, those kinds of things are something you run into in Linux, and usually in Windows, you can just kind of ignore it all. But uh, all those five reasons said, uh, Linux isn't that bad to use. It does have a learning curve, and uh, if you have the time or the inclination to get into this kind of techy stuff, I definitely think you should give it a shot. It's good to know. Um, sooner or later, you might need to use it, especially if you're going to do web development stuff. Uh, I just tend to find it just works so much smoother to develop on a Linux machine than a Windows machine. But uh, that's going to be it for this video. So I've been Chris. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at five of the reasons why uh, kind of migrating to Linux or trying Linux out as a Windows user, an average one, not a super techy guy, is often kind of tricky, kind of a pain, and it does have that learning curve that you have to stick out and move through. So hopefully I'll see you guys in my future video content. Thanks for watching.